Hello everyone, Cyanide here, and uh, today I'll be showing you how to install RevOS the simplest and fastest way possible. Uh, get it set up properly right after so that you can get up and running with the OS in the least time possible and for you to play your games quickly with an optimized and very fast OS. So first of all, just keep in mind that you will be needing a USB stick that is at least 4 gigabytes. Uh, that you can reset. Uh, so if you have any files on the USB stick you want to use, just back them up somewhere safe. Uh, you will also need to reset your SSD or HDD where you have Windows installed currently. So just keep that in mind and back up any files that you may need uh, into uh, your HDD if you have, for example, both an SSD and an HDD or into an external drive or the cloud. So to get started, just go ahead and open up your browser, obviously, and go on the revision website. All the links will be down in the description uh, so that it's simple for you to access them. Uh, right here, just click on download. Um, this right here will be the latest version uh, of the OS that is released, which is the one I will always recommend to use. Uh, you can download it through Google Drive or Mega both are fine. Or if you need older versions, you can just click right here on alternative downloads which will take you to this page where you have, for example, right now, Tony H2 and 1709. While I do not recommend uh, you install any older versions, if you want or need them for any reason, you can get them right here. So just download uh, whatever ISO you want to use. And then uh, you will need uh, Rufus 2, which is the software that we use to burn our ISO into our actual uh, USB and make it bootable. So just download the portable version. You don't need uh, the actual installer. Once you have those two figured out, um, just go ahead and open up right here Rufus. Uh, click yes, of course. And right here, so this window will pop up. Um, plug in your USB at this point, in case you haven't already. So I'll just plug mine right now. There we go. Okay, so there we go. That's my USB stick. Uh, in boot selection, keep it as disk or ISO image. And on the right hand side, click on select. Uh, then select whatever ISO you downloaded. In my case, uh, I am using 29H1 for today's video. And image option, keep a standard Windows installation. Partition scheme is always going to be GPT unless you know what you're doing. And target system is going to be Wi-Fi because we select GPT. Uh, file system and cluster size keep as default. And at this point, just press start. Right here, it'll tell you that, of course, it'll destroy all the data on the USB stick, uh, which is what I told you earlier. Just back up whatever data you have somewhere safe and then click OK. Uh, at this point, you should see the status changing. Uh, this will take maybe five, 10 minutes, depends on a lot of factors, USB speed, uh, your PC speed, etc. So just let it do its thing for a little while and I'll be back when it's done. So uh, once Rufus is done, as you can see right here, the status bar will just say ready with the full uh, bar in green. You can just close the software. Um, we can go check real quick right here. Uh, you will see that the USB will be named after whatever ISO you burned on it. So in my case, it's RevOS 21H1. It has all the files that we will need, etc. And at this point, to actually boot into the USB stick and be able to, uh, well, first of all, set up, go into the Windows setup and also reset uh, our uh, drive. Open up your start menu right here, click on the power button and then uh, hold shift, right? Hold it down and click on restart at the same time. Do not release shift while you click and you'll get this please wait screen right here. After that, you will get this, you, this screen right here and click on use a device. At this point, so uh, I cannot exactly boot into it from my virtual machine. However, uh, on a normal uh, PC, so as you can see right here on my laptop directly, um, when you click, uh, you will see a, a couple of devices, uh, namely EFI USB device, which is the one we will use to uh, boot into uh, the USB. Uh, I would recommend that you unplug any other USB stick so that you don't get confused and use another USB drive. So right there, just click on USB, EFI USB device. Uh, as you can see, the PC will reboot. And at this point, just uh, leave it for like a minute or two. It's going to take a bit of time to boot. Um, it will give you then this uh, setup is starting message, which is a good sign since you were able to boot into the USB stick. And 
now just click on I accept the license terms right here and then go and click next uh, right here you'll have all of your drives listed so any HDDs or SSDs that you will have uh, plugged into your computer in this case we well I only have a single drive but if we were going to install on a normal PC usually every time it has installed Windows uh, there's a few partitions that are generated so in fact we will need to uh, delete those so the easiest way to do that if you don't want to bother for example uh, trying trying to wipe every single partition by itself or maybe by mistake wiping something you don't want to wipe just press shift and f10 this will open up this cmd window uh, at this point just type in disk part keep in mind that the keyboard is in qwerty so if you don't know the qwerty layout i would recommend that you look it up in google and try to match it to your keyboard type in list disk this will list all of your disks uh, I would recommend that you look at the size so that you know which one you are wiping. If you have two discs that have the same sizes, uh, I sincerely could not tell you how you can turn them apart aside from seeing how much is free. So for example, if you have a disc that has like 100 gigabytes free, another that has 500 free, so that would be a determining factor. In this case, I only have one, so I'll just do select disc and the number that is right here. So in my case, it's zero. Right here, well, it would say that it is selected. Just type in clean and it's hit it succeed in cleaning the disk. Close the command prompt, click on refresh, and once it's done refreshing all of your drives, you'll see that a bunch of partitions have disappeared if you wipe the disk with Windows in it, and you'll have a drive, whatever number you deleted, an allocated space. Select that one and then click next. And at this point, Windows is going to start installing normally. Uh, just let it go, it's gonna take maybe 5-10 minutes, it's not as slow as Rufus for example, but it'll still depend on your USB stick speed, uh, your PC speed in general, and what kind of drive you're using. When the installer is going to be done, you'll see the screen right here, uh, you can either wait out the 5 seconds or 10 seconds that it asks you to wait for, or just click restart now. And the moment you turn your screen turns black, which is right now, Plug out your, unplug your USB, sorry, and uh, don't plug it in, obviously, uh, but it is just to prevent your PC from rebooting into the Windows setup another time. At this point, just let your PC again do its thing. This is going to take another while. Uh, it's going to set up a bunch of stuff, uh, going to have your PC restarting a few times. You're also going to see a bunch of messages pop up, pop up like right here, so just let it do its thing. At some point during the install process, you'll see this prompt right here, which is asking you for a username for your PC. So I'll just input something in there. Uh, for the password, you don't need to always put in one. You can just uh, leave this field empty and you'll have no password if you don't use any. Just click next. And uh, at this point, it's going to ask you if you want Cortana or not. If you do use it, click accept, obviously. If you don't, just click on that now. It won't be installed and it's going to reboot again and start preparing windows as it says once again Um, your PC will boot in uh, after a little while, but uh, you just wait a bit because it's going to reboot again after it applies some stuff. So as you can see, some command prompts will pop up, etc. Just uh, wait for the second restart before touching your PC. So once you boot into the windows the second time, we can now go ahead and start with the post install section of the video. So well, first of all, I'm just going to change my resolution. Uh, your resolution just might be changed to something that is not your screen's default resolution. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot, so just in case it does, uh, do as I just did right now. Uh, just in case your internet is working, uh, this is uh, if you have Ethernet at least on boot, or if you connect it to Wi-Fi network. Uh, this is just a bug with Windows currently. Uh, we haven't found a fix that we can integrate yet. However, uh, I will leave a link to a GitHub repository down below that I created with a little fix uh, that I compiled from Flex and original fix for this. It's just a bad file that you run uh, that will fix the issue. 
So we'll first start by obviously changing any keyboard or language settings on Windows. So just go to the start menu, click on settings right here, and then go on time and language. In date and time, if you are in a different time zone, just select it right here. So in my case, I want to set it to uh, European Paris. There we go. Um, in region, uh, if you use any other formats or uh, any country specific stuff, you can change it here, of course. For language, uh, you can obviously choose another language. So if you're speaking or want Windows to be in another displaying language, you can choose it right here. So all of these are available. Or if you want to use English with another keyboard layout than QWERTY, just click right here on English, click on Options, click on Add a Keyboard. So in my case, I'll add the uh, French Azerty keyboard. And you can either keep or remove the US keyboard, but I'll remove it in my case. Um, just that a little detail I glossed over during the video, uh, you need to activate Windows no matter what before you do any changes. So go in the Start menu and Settings and scroll down. You'll probably see this Windows in activated, activate Windows now prompt. If you don't, it means that Windows has been activated with your BIOS key, which usually uh, comes with your PC when you buy a pre-built one. Otherwise, uh, as you can see right here, if you click on the message, it'll take you to this activation page and it'll say that Windows is not activated if it wants to show up. But either way, uh, Go, uh, go ahead and buy a key from eBay, for example, since they're really cheap there, or activate Windows through less legal means. But I highly, highly, highly recommend that you activate Windows before you do any of these changes and use the OS in general. After you've done that, um, you can go ahead and install, uh, at this point, your browser of preference. So in my case, it's Chrome. You can use any of these links that redirect to our website to access Internet Explorer. So I'll just go ahead and install Chrome. So once you're on your browser, if you want, you can always start by, um, for example, fixing the internet bug, which I recommend you do uh, early on just so that you don't run into any issues since Microsoft apps actually don't work. Uh, I'll leave the link to uh, the GitHub repository in the description, but as you can see right here, uh, just go on the right hand side in releases, click right here on network fix, and then just click on this first one, which is network.bat, and it will download this file. You can click on keep. Uh, if you want to know what's in there, you can either browse the code directly on GitHub right here, or you can just uh, right click and edit the bat file and start it as admin. That's really important. So, oops. Um, download, so go wherever you download it, usually it's going to be download. Right click and run as an administrator. It's very important. And then it's going to restart your PC twice. So you're going to see this first message that's going to say network icon hotfix step one complete. Uh, let your PC restart. Once you boot the second time, uh, you will see that your icon will be back. However, you still need to wait for it to restart for the second time. So as you can see, just the step two. At this point, when you reboot the second time, as you can see, the network icon will be back and working normally. You can, of course, delete the bat file uh, if you don't need it anymore, obviously. So there we go. Um, now, uh, now I would recommend that you first start by installing uh, whatever zipping software you use. So in my case, I use 7-Zip personally. Oops. Uh, you can use, of course, WinRAR if that's what you grew up using or whatever. But I would recommend 7-Zip as it's a free alternative that works really well. Um, if you install 7-Zip, uh, just open it at least once. Um, and then go right here in Tools, Options and click on the plus two times in every column, then click apply and okay. That will just make it so that 7-zip automatically opens any kinds of files that it can open. And then a uh, very important note for laptop users. If you have a laptop that 
then you will probably have to do this step anyways, unless you have what we call a mock switch, which basically means that the display of your laptop is managed by your discrete graphics card, which is either Nvidia or AMD. If you don't have a mock switch or don't know what it is, uh, you will have to install your Intel or AMD CPUs uh, integrated graphics card drivers so that, for example, you can change brightness and have high refresh rates. So in my case, I have an i5 9300H. So just type in whatever GPU CPU name you have, go into the spec sheet. In my case, it's an Intel processor, but it's the same process for AMD. Scroll down a bit and you'll see processor graphics. So I have an Intel UHD graphics 630. Just go ahead and search for drivers for that. So there you go, G630 drivers. First link usually. Um, you don't choose the beta version, choose the normal version here and click on the blue link. And then right here, just click on download and let's start downloading the driver. Install it, it's really important. Uh, after you're done with that, uh, now you can just move on with uh, installing your actual discrete GPU drivers if you have a discrete GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA or AMD GPU, I'll leave the links down in the description obviously, but I think you are aware of the process. I have an NVIDIA graphics card, so I'll just show you with that. Uh, the choice right here doesn't exactly matter unless you have a quadro card. So just put whatever uh, right here, click on search, uh, then download and download again. Delete down your drivers. Uh, they're all the same. They're just uh, named differently so that you're not confused. If you don't want to use the control panel that is in the Microsoft store for NVIDIA, uh, cancel this download, right click on the link that's right here and then click on copy link address. Go on a new tab, paste that and delete right here DCH or at least dash DCH so that it just says international dash WHQL and press enter and it'll start downloading a new driver that doesn't need the Microsoft Store control panel. So same process for AMD GPUs, just go uh, on their website obviously. Uh, I'll leave all the links once again down in the description so that you can do it easily. Uh, after this, uh, you can install DirectX. Uh, I'll leave the uh, di direct download link in the description so that you don't need to uh, go into the Microsoft website. Um, it's a very small installer, uh, but once you open it, click I accept the agreement. Next, uh, uncheck install the Bing bar, and then click next again. Uh, wait for a few seconds while it does its thing, and then click next, and let it do its thing. Meanwhile, you can go ahead and download Visual C++ runtimes. Uh, I'll leave the link to the tech power up uh, all-in-one redistributable. Um, click right here on download, and then choose whatever server is closest to you. So in my case, it's the UK one. Um, once the Visual C runtimes are finished downloading, you can open up the zip file and extract everything into a folder in wherever you want really, but just make sure that they're all in the same folder. So there we go, okay, extract it. Um, well, right here DirectX is done, so you can just click finish. Go into the folder and double click on install all.bat and just let it do its thing. It's not going to take really long and it's going to install everything automatically without you needing to touch anything. And at this point, you are done. Uh, you can now go ahead and use your OS however you want. Uh, we don't really recommend that you do any further changes unless you know what you're doing. Uh, the OS is already well optimized. You can go ahead and download any of your games now, uh, whatever work you had, back up your files, restore them so at least, and just use your PC normally. Uh, you shouldn't really notice any problems in terms of compatibility. However, if you face any issues with the OS that are not coming from any modifications you may have made yourself, uh, come go ahead and join our Discord. The link is right here on the desktop if you're already in it. And ask us in the help channels about any question you have. So we'll sign out. I hope you have a great day and see you later.